Hi, everyone. I'm Adam Myhill. I'm the cinematic head for Unity and the creator of Cinemachine, the camera system. And I'm Mike Weatherick, a product manager with the Montreal R&D team. And we're going to show you a little bit about Timeline and Cinemachine, which are like totally BFFs. So we're very excited to show you Timeline, our new multi-track sequencing tool. As you've seen with the Atom short, Timeline is great for linear movies or cutscene creation. And what we're going to show you today is that it's much more than just a cutscene tool. Cinemachine is Unity's smart camera system. It's for gameplay cameras, it's for cutscene cameras, film, everything in between. It allows you to create cameras which follow your direction and they shoot procedural, uh, they shoot variable objects in real time. So let's jump into the demo. Okay, so the content we're gonna show you today is from the game Ghost of a Tale by Seath Gallet. And he's gonna be dumbing this game downstairs at the Expo Hall and it's beautiful, I suggest you take a look. Uh, until recently, he's been the animation director for Despicable Me and the Lorax, and then he decided to go out on his own, and he basically single-handedly made this game. And we want to thank him for lending it to us. Seath, wherever you are, you're very talented. Thank you very much. So we've stripped out the scene in this example, and we've just got a couple of things working together. So what you see is this small little demo of the mouse. We're going to have an interactive object, and we're going to choreograph it all the timeline. So on the bottom, you can see the new timeline window. You can easily drag in animations or audio, keyframe your own animations, or extend it with the pl new playable API. One of the key game mechanics in Ghost of a Tale is stealth gameplay. As you explore the world, you'll encounter various enemies and you have to sneak past them by hiding in objects like this chest here. What we've done is recreate some of these items using Timeline and Cinemachine. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so we're going into gameplay. I missed the play button. And no, here we go. Okay, here we go. That was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're running around. We're in a free lit game, a free lit camera. We got the timeline there. You can see the trigger volume. We run up. We start to play timeline. I'm still in gameplay, but you can see we're choreographing the the animations, we're blending between them, we got the audio, it's all triggered. You can drag any game object, throw it into timeline and choreograph it however you want. So one thing we're missing is uh, obviously cameras. So let's throw in a Cinemachine track here. Okay. So how this works, you've got three clips. You've got the gameplay clip, which is calling the gameplay camera. You've got the procedural camera clip, which is in the middle, and then we blend back to gameplay. Now, what I want you to see here is, see how there's a little target on the mouse's eye? We're procedurally tracking his eye. So I don't know what the animation's gonna be, it can be variable, but the camera is smartly tracking this. We can have dampening values and the, the camera will respond appropriately to the animation. So it's actually kind of animation proof. So let's give that a try. Something that's really hard, uh, a lot of you will know this, is going seamlessly from your gameplay camera to a cutscene camera. But because Cinemachine is completely unified, you can just, through timeline, blend from my gameplay camera straight into a cutscene. We're procedurally tracking him back. Now, Mike, let's tweak the graphics on level four. All right. So <laughs> okay. we grab the new camera and... So watch this. In the game view, you can recompose a shot. It's a whole new way of working with cameras. It's like inverse kinematics for cameras. You're not actually animating them directly. You're just defining what shot you'd like. So you can see Mike, he's dragging around the frame guides um, right in the game view window. Now let's blend. Yeah, that was, that was actually really hard to do that. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's, it's super fun. And then watch this at the end. We're just gonna blend out of this a little bit faster, right? So see where the clips overlap? That's blending. It blends anything. And this is the power of timeline. You can have any of your assets in there. And if you overlap the clips, it'll blend. So we're just blending cameras here. Gameplay, sorry, cutscene back into gameplay. So we can see that in action. And blend to this new shot with a new composition. So you get where this is going. Imagine cutscenes filled with many of these cameras and they're all just figuring out the shots based on your direction. Okay, so let's get out of this scene. We're gonna go to a bigger scene, it's got more stuff. So this one's really cool because we have a whole, like several timeline sequences working together to create what you see here. So even from, let me just hit play, even from the beginning, um, we've got interactivity in our loading screen, um, we have UI elements, audio, a whole variety of things, all sequenced and perfectly timed using timeline. 
we're even calling a modified gameplay camera, free look. So you're actually the user still has a little bit of control even in the menu system, just to keep people engaged. Okay, I'm gonna hit it. We're gonna roll the timeline for the intro. So doing the UI animation. And this is all done with no coding at all. So you can see that we're blending between different shots. They have different post effects, different depth of field settings, different focus distances. And that wasn't a camera animation. That was just a blend from one camera to another camera over timeline. Let's see, we leave here. I'm gonna go seamlessly into gameplay. Now this is the free look camera that I showed you before. Uh, it's really powerful. Uh, tomorrow at two o'clock we drill into more of the nuts and bolts and cinema machines. So if you're doing gameplay cameras, uh, come check that out. But this is really cool. Mike, um, bust open the uh, steep driven camera module. Uh, okay, yes. check out what this thing does. It's a little gizmo that scans your whole project for states. These are all the states in the game. These are all animations. And it lets you, just with a couple of clicks, combine animation states with cameras. How long you'd like to blend in, how long you'd like to blend out, how long they hold for. So here I've got my, you know, free look gameplay one, gameplay free look. And they go into a sneak, the camera pushes in, we change the FOV, we add some handheld, let go and it comes back. No code, no scripts, just hook it up. <laughs> yes. There's some other camera artists out there, I can tell. <laughs> so yeah. This first object that we interact with is more of a traditional cutscene where we'll actually take control away from the player and switch to some of these cameras. Again, no coding involved in any of this. We cut to a shot with unique um, post effects. We set the focus distance to blur out the background. It's super fun. You, you do this, you can do this in play mode, like while you're working, you're actually sculpting these things. Okay, so this next little crate, it's kind of like a sculpted gameplay. It's not a hard cutscene, it's not gameplay. But watch what happens. So we go up, we trigger it, and I still have control. But I've set the free look to just compose on him, and I've da like attenuated the inputs. So it is gameplay still, but it's like an attenu it's like a, a sculpted gameplay. So sort of this hybrid in between the two worlds, which is fun instead of like a cutscene and you know put the controller down and just watch your the the, 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 the user still you know playing, still engaged. So to end off our little demo, we've got a, a, a different sequence that we've created here. Um, so we'll go up and run and tri trigger it. So again, all of the actions you see in this sequence are done through timeline, um, including the, the guards walking their paths. You can see the yellow balls. We've keyframed waypoints for them using timeline. And all they're doing is using the nav mesh system to navigate the environment. We're just saying target the headshots. I don't know where these guys are walking. It doesn't matter. We're just saying we want a wide shot, we want headshots. These are the guys we want to target, and the cameras figure it out. We actually have the next one here where we blend from one camera, which is targeting on this one guy. We just blend, look at the other guy. So you can blend between targets. You just mix and match and overlap these cameras to blend them. It's really powerful. And that's our demo. Thank you very much. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Unity3D.com timeline, grab it, have a play. This is our beta release. Uh, make some cool stuff with it. So we have two talks during GDC, one, or one later on today at 1 p.m., and then we've got another one at 2 p.m., and we'll talk about this at ad nauseum. Thank you very much. Thanks. <coughs>So next up, I'd like to introduce Larry Cutler. He's a co-founder and the CTO of Baobab Studios. They're an early user of Timeline. They've made some super cool stuff with it. Come on up, Larry. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. And it's really great uh, to be up here on stage with Unity at GDC. And so at Baobab Studios, we're taking full advantage of Unity to really reinvent traditional animated storytelling using VR. Now, we all know that VR is becoming a great platform for games, but it is also a revolutionary new medium for storytelling. And at Baobab, we are really excited to be experimenting, to being at the forefront of figuring out what's possible here. So our background at Baobab is deeply rooted in computer animated feature films. I spent the better part of my career, first off at Pixar on their early movies, and then later at DreamWorks. And that's where I met my co-founder and our chief creative officer, Eric Darnell. And Eric was the writer and director for all four of the Madagascar films at the studio. So we basically came together and our team created our first piece of narrative content, Invasion, which we released last year. And to be honest, we were really surprised and blown away by the success and the reception of Invasion. So Invasion quickly became one of the top downloaded apps of content across all the VR platforms. It actually also garnered a lot of critical acclaim. It showcased at a number of different film festivals, including Tribeca, Cannes, and Toronto. And to us, the reason for Invasion's success is that audiences really fell in love with this bunny character, Chloe. And from a VR perspective, what's even more interesting is that when we would put people in the headset, almost universally, they would treat Chloe as if she was real. They would react to her in ways that you would just never react to a character if you were watching them up on the big screen. And so this really triggered a light bulb for us that, hey, there's something special. There's something profound going on here. There's real promise in storytelling in VR. So Asteroids is a follow-up to Invasion. And it was made with Unity. And we premiered it last month at Sundance Film Festival. And Sundance is really amazing because it brings together all the top pieces of narrative content under one roof in VR. And there's all these amazing filmmakers who are tackling the same types of problems that we are in VR, but they're all coming about it from very different backgrounds and very different perspectives. So I'm really excited to show you a short clip of Asteroids right now. Now, I'm sure you all picked up and realized that the voice of uh, the female alien character was actually played by actress Elizabeth Banks. That was completely obvious, right? <laughs> um, with Invasion and Asteroids, we're really experimenting with the idea of placing the viewer directly in the s inside the story, making the viewer an active participant in the narrative. So in the clip you just saw, you, the viewer, you're a menial task robot aboard the alien spaceship. And throughout the narrative, you have the opportunity to help out the two alien characters, Mac and Cheese, on their journey. So in order to create asteroids, we really relied heavily on timeline and all the great features that you uh, just saw demos of. And for us, what was critical about timeline is, is that on one hand, we were making very precise precision edits, just like you would do on a film. But on the other hand, we were layering on top of that pretty complicated character interactivity and interactive moments that's much more akin to a game. And so Timeline was flexible enough to allow us to have the best of both worlds. Now, our goal at Baobab is to create narrative experiences that are larger than life. And we really hope to, to get the same type of empathy that you feel from a great film, but combine that with the agency of a game 
and ultimately layer on top the motivations of life. Now, what I mean by that is that we're always striving to tell a great story with great characters that you connect with, just like you would do in a movie. But unlike a movie, in VR, you're like there. You're immersed in the world. You have agency in that world. And it gives us a great opportunity to compel the viewer to actually act on the character's behalf, just as you might act in real life. And that's the definition of compassion. It's turning empathy into action. And that's really our goal at Baobab, and that's what we view as the promise of VR storytelling. And with each of the projects that we work on, we're making incremental steps towards achieving that goal. And Unity is really critical for us to achieve that as well. So I just want to uh, let you know that we hope that you can watch Asteroids this week at GDC. It's going to be uh, showed at the, the Unity booth. So please stop by the Unity booth all week at GDC and you can actually view Asteroids. And it's also going to be showcased at CineQuest Film Festival this coming weekend right after GDC. And, and we're actually, we just found out, we're, we're proud to announce that Asteroids just won the Best Animated Motion Picture Award at CineQuest. So, thank you. So, you can also look later on this year for the public release of Asteroids on all the major platforms, and thank you. Well, wow, that was absolutely fantastic. So um, we're, we're getting very close to the close, and I hope with the deep explanation we gave you on um, Unity 5.6, you can see this massive evolution towards what I believe is the best tool set available for building games in AR and VR. And I hope we gave you a glimpse, an important glimpse, at the revolution that comes next with Unity 2017. Now, I'm gonna make the last introduction. Before I do, I always need an arm-waving photo for my mom, so can I ask you guys to like just a little bit of a wave, something? There we go, I need the video version. Go, we got you all. All right, so the um, in wrapping up, um, look, I've been doing these a while now, opening up with a description of our mission, our vision, our principles around democratization, enabling your success, and solving hard problems. and. Those are deep in my core, but someone wrote them. Someone created those ideas. They're, they're not mine as an original. And the man that created them is the founder of Unity. He's a friend, a longtime CEO, a man whose collar needs no introduction. <laughs> Mr. David Helgeson, come to the stage. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I don't know. I just had 42 kind of pinch myself moments during this presentation this morning. Um, what we're doing here is, is kind of anti-gravity. Um, all of Unity is kind of a pinch myself moment going on for 14 years. Um, you know, we've, 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 we've turned, we've, we've, we, had, we had the time when, when we felt that every hour put into engineering on the product had less output. For years, like you know, the, the, the we were slowing. The, like we were hiring more people, so we got kind of stuff done. But it was really, really challenging, and we turned that corner. We're really, really productive. We're putting out all these wonderful things, and they really work. You know, for years we were having this feeling that there were you know more bugs being created than than we could kind of whack them all away. Uh, and I was just you know turning talking to Alchemy just now, and they have finally this moment of being able to upgrade Unity because they want new platform stuff, and it actually works, <laughs> and it doesn't break everything. Uh, so we turned that corner. Um, you know, we, 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 we've been stuck with old parts of the engine that were really kind of weird and written bef in a sort of a pre-wise time, like the transform component with like weird callbacks and unbelievably inefficient kind of use of, of memory. And, you know, Joachim and his guys are rewriting that. So we're really kind of turning the corner in a way that feels like a big kind of, you know, pinch myself <laughs> uh, thing. Um, but it's because it's really proving that it's actually possible to create this company <laughs> And, and make it do the right thing and democratize game development, God damn it. And it's really, really fantastic. So just thanks for being with us all this way. Uh, thanks for building cool stuff and uh, you know, thanks for making the game industry awesome. So have a great GDC. <laughs> thanks guys, thanks. Thanks everyone. <laughs>